Hello SpaceX fans, we are back with another most exciting video from the world of space. Today in this video, we are talking about SpaceX testing their new upgraded Raptor engine 2.0. Isn't that exciting? If you are new to our channel, we are glad to have you on board. We post daily updates from the world of space. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any update. Elon Musk has implied that SpaceX recently performed the first test of Starship's new Raptor 2 engine. Apart from initiating integrated static fire testing, operationalized Raptor, the first prototype may have briefly become the most powerful engine of its kind ever tested, before destroying itself. While not as successful as the first static fire test campaign of a full-scale Raptor 1 engine, which survived several tests, the early demise of the first Raptor 2 prototype is still a routine part of engine development and it marks the beginning of a process that should eventually result in a super heavy booster with 50% more thrust than the next most powerful rocket ever flown. Prior to last week, competitor Blue Origin's BE-4, which is still in development and is hoped to one day power ULA's Vulcan and the company's own reusable Nuglen, was likely the most powerful methane-slash-oxygen engine ever tested. The BE-4 is capable of producing up to 244 tons of thrust. SpaceX's first finished Raptor 2 prototype appears to have narrowly stolen BE-4's crown on its first static fire briefly generating main combustion chamber pressures of 321 bar and as much as 245 tons of thrust. Raptor 2 has just begun production and will consider more than 230 tons or more than half a million pounds. There's also some ambiguity because according to Blue Origin's website, the BE-4 thrusts at 2,400 kilonewton. Regardless, Raptor 2 is designed to produce up to 230 tons of thrust in flight and Musk claims that it is a significant improvement in simplification over Raptor 1 which normally produces up to 185 tons of thrust at chamber pressures closer to 270 bar. It's not surprising then that the first Raptor 2 prototype ever completed exploded during its first test when SpaceX pushed it to nearly 107% of its maximum rated thrust and main chamber pressure. Despite being impressive, SpaceX has technically pushed Raptor 1 prototypes even further and without failure. Musk later admitted that there was some damage present, but during an August 2020 stress test, a relatively young Raptor 1 engine made it all the way up to 330 bar and spent about 10 seconds at chamber pressures above 320 bar without failing. Even so, the Raptor 2 prototype had also reached 330 bar. It would have produced around 252 tons of thrust, 12% more than that of the Raptor 1 predecessor. The main differences between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2 are cleaner plumbing and wire harnesses, as well as a wider combustion chamber throat, which allows the engine to produce more thrust in roughly the same package, according to Musk. The CEO has mentioned the possibility of a power-optimized Raptor variant with up to 300 tons of thrust over the last two years, but only recently Musk claims that SpaceX has decided to keep the Raptor family as simple as possible, with only two variants, one with a sea-level nozzle, Raptor center, and boost, and one with a larger vacuum-optimized nozzle. SpaceX is well on its way to qualifying Raptor for Starship's first orbital launches. Starship's Super Heavy booster will shut down and separate from the spacecraft 10 seconds shy of 3 minutes after liftoff, according to that timeline. The Starship will then ignite 3 or 6 Raptor engines for less than 6 minutes to boost itself close to orbital velocity. Surprisingly, the same timeline makes no mention of a deorbit burn which is required for the first orbital test flight to be classified as suborbital, even if Starship is approaching orbital velocity. Regardless, the document confirms that Starship's orbital insertion burns will be between 5 and 6 minutes long, corresponding to the maximum stamina required from its Raptor engines. In its current configuration, Starship will never be able to reach orbit without Raptor engines capable of operating continuously for around 6 minutes. 
the scope of Raptor's long duration capabilities and thus the state of SpaceX's testing were effectively unknown until high altitude Starship test flights began in December 2020. As Musk points out, if SpaceX is able to boost Raptor 2 to 230 tons of thrust, a super heavy booster with 33 mostly identical engines would have a peak liftoff thrust of around 7,600 tons. For a large rocket with liquid propulsion only, a thrust to weight ratio of more than 1.5 is very respectable and improves acceleration off the launch pad, reduces gravity losses in the first few minutes of ascent, and thus boosts overall efficiency. Already, Musk's implication that 33 Raptors could eventually be installed on Super Heavy differs from comments made by the CEO just a month ago when he revealed a base increase from 28 to 29 engines, with the possibility of expanding to 32 in the future. The implication that SpaceX is considering adding three more vacuum-optimized engines to Starship's six planned Raptors is also new, leaving ships with six Raptor vacuum engines and three sea-level optimized engines. Musk says SpaceX has yet to decide whether Raptor Vacuum will be associated with Raptor 2, increasing thrust, or if greater efficiency will be pursued instead. Regardless, even with six 200-ton thrust RVACs and three Raptor 2s, Starship would produce up to 2,000 tons of thrust in a vacuum, resulting in an upper stage with and almost as much thrust as Falcon Heavy and a fully field thrust to weight ratio of 1.7, even better than Super Heavy. Elon Musk, on the other hand, recently announced the construction of a new production plant near the McGregor engine testing facility. This plant will produce Raptor 2 engines that are optimized for firing at sea level, the majority of which will be used on Super Heavy boosters. The Raptor 2 is a future version of the engine that will soon begin testing and the factory will be able to produce two to four of these engines per day. Blue Origin and SpaceX have been competing for many spacecrafts and commercial contracts. Both companies are working hard on their next generation rockets. But SpaceX is the leading space company, having produced numerous rocket engines since its inception in 2002. SpaceX completed its 100th Raptor engine a few months ago. This extraordinary milestone was achieved in just 29 months, a little more than two years after Blue Origin's rocket engine development began. With work on the BE-4 engine beginning in 2011, this rate of production is higher than that of a typical rocket factory, but lower than that of an automobile factory. It will be the highest output and most advanced rocket engine factory in the world, Elon stated in a tweet. He believes it will be required to support high-speed super-heavy operations, such as many flights to Mars for the construction of the planned Martian city. Before SpaceX can begin qualifying the first Raptor 2 engines for the first Starship or Super Heavy prototypes designed for the new engine, one or several months of work are likely to remain. Nonetheless, SpaceX's rapid progress in the first few months of Raptor 2 testing is very encouraging. With this, we have reached the end of our video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again tomorrow with more similar updates from the world of space. Until next time.